Six months, nine months, and out he comes. Yes. Was he God? Yes. So you're telling me a woman, a human woman, was carrying God yes. around in her yes. stomach? Yes. Amen. Come on, man. That's not logic. It doesn't make sense. Was he God at yes. that time? Yes. Yes. Oh. <laughs> so, brothers and sisters, oh, ladies and gentlemen, how can you rationalize such beliefs? I mean, I have no problem with people believing in them. People can believe in anything they want. There are people who believe in monkey God. They believe in elephant God. There are people who believe in snake God. I have no, people are free to believe these things. Is their life? Is, is them? Is their life? But what I find really difficult to believe is that people can believe God was in a mother's womb. He came out, and then the mother was actually cleaning him every time he urinated and defecated. The mother of God was cleaning God every time he defecated, and 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 even as a child, it. If Mary, if Mary did not feed Jesus, he would be mal malnutrition. If she left him with um, his um, his waist in his nappies or however they used, sorry, he would get rash. And there was no pseudo cream then. Was there any pseudo cream then? There was no pseudo cream. There were no doctors to treat. So, so if you think about these things, God, fully dependent. Fully, completely dependent on a woman to take care of him. And he got you, circumcised in eight days. On the How seventh day, me God was so helpless, some help people came and leaked him. They clipped him. Clipped him? Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to know where, right. that, where they put that. And, and, and amazingly, amazingly, it amazingly, amazingly, it doesn't stop there. And it doesn't stop there. When they cut it, where they keep it? <laughs> there is another problem. I keep it for my son. <laughs> for him, I put it, you know. There's another problem. There's another problem. Now, now, being God. Obviously, Jesus, I mean, the Christian belief is that he was actually God at that time when he was being circumcised. No, wait, 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 wait let me finish, let me finish. Now, when he was being circumcised, if he is God, which the Christian belief he, he was, uh, did he actually um, permit the people to do it? Did he actually agree to it? Did he consent to his circumcision? Uh, wow. The logic goes, yes, because he was God. God had power over all things, so he allowed people to circumcise him. So he was circumcised. Now God willed himself to be circumcised on the seventh day. Amazingly, who is not circumcised today? The Christians. The Christians! <laughs> two billion Christians on the planet, they do not follow God. Yeah. To them, to them God was circumcised. Willingly. Five. Willingly. Yeah. It's not five that he's forced into circumcision. If he's God, and no one can force him into circumcision. Huh? Right? No, so it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't stop there. It was that God, Audu Billah, Sama Audu Billah, who was walking on the... He never ate pig. He despised pigs. Jesus Christ despised pigs. Who eats pigs? Who, who eats pigs today? Christians. Christians. Okay. How did Jesus pray? How did Jesus pray? How did Jesus pray? Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. We are told in the book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 39. Jesus went in the, into the Garden of Gethsemane. He fell on his face. Let me go to and he prayed to Let God. Go to and this is how you fall on your face, by the way. You don't fall like that. What, okay. Let them you don't, you do don't come me. down like that. What? You fall on your face like this. Watch, watch, this watch, is how Jesus prayed. Watch. Watch. This is how Jesus prayed. This is how Jesus prayed. So we allow you to mock out God. Oh. We allow you, you to mock out God. This is how he prayed. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 39. Now the question is, who doesn't pray like this today? Christians. So, Jesus was circumcised. Who's not circumcised? Christians. 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 Jesus didn't eat pig. Who eats pig? Christians. Christians. We're not Jews. Jesus prayed by prostration. Who doesn't pray like that? Christians. Christians. We're not Jews. Jesus' mother had hijab. Who doesn't have hijab? Christians. We're not Jews. He prayed to God. <laughs> Thank you very much. In the name, in the name of Jesus, every knee, in the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Okay. Who doesn't bow? So they, 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 no, no, they don't. They don't. So, so this shows you as a Christian. That having known all those things, you still do not follow Jesus Christ, then you're not following Jesus Christ. Period. As simple as that. As a Christian, you're not following Jesus. As a man, as a God, whatever you think he was, you're not following him. You don't pray like him. You don't circumcise like him. 
You don't eat, well, you don't follow his dietary I'll rules, you, you don't follow anything well, he says. Yeah. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, <laughs> yeah. how do you know that I'm not circumcised? How do you know I don't eat pork? And how do you know if I don't you are curious? circumcised, you are going against the global Christian tradition. Christians don't circumcise, Sorry. generally. Sorry. Generally, they don't circumcise. In Sorry. Africa, the governments are paying Christians to be circumcised yeah. to protect themselves against HIV. How Allah works, Allahu Akbar. Yeah. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala works. It's amazing. <laughs> How God works is amazing. Because, you know, one of the reasons why Christians are not circumcising in Africa in particular, I'm saying sub-Saharan Africa, because they equate circumcision with Islam. To them, to sub-Saharan Africans, circumcision means Islam. You become a Muslim. You've been clipped, you become a Muslim. Right? <laughs> Seriously, that's what it is. And now the governments like Zimbabwe and Botswana and Namibia and uh, places like uh, Zambia, you know, you go there, the governments have programs where they are Christian governments run by Christians and they're encouraging Christian masses to circumcise just like Jesus was, just like, Mo you see, now we see the wisdom of Islam. On top of that, circumcision, circumcision actually protects against a lot of diseases. Yeah. Personal appearance, right? I agree. And what you are quoting are unfortunately Catholic no. ritualistic practices, and you are claiming to use them as proof of an objective truth. No, I am saying when you claim to love a person and you do everything opposite to his <laughs> tradition or what he did, then you're not loving that person. I love my father. He's clean shaven, but I choose to grow a beard. Does That's that mean different. I, I do not That's love him? Different. Why is that different? No, no, no. no, no. Your, your prophet is not your, your, well. your father is not your prophet, or exactly. he's not your god. Right, so okay, okay. So when you when you when you when you follow someone as a prophet, are you dressed like your prophet right now? I have. Is your beard in the same fashion as him? Are you the same race as him? I'll answer the question. I'll answer it. Nothing I'm wearing and doing goes against my prophet's teachings. That's the point. I'm 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 staying within the. I I'm okay. So, so the point is, if I'm going against my prophet's teachings, for example, not circumcising, okay, not following his dietary rules, not following his tradition, not pray like him, okay, then I am not actually believing in him. I would like to see evidence where Jesus instructed us to pray in a specific manner. I would like to see evidence where Jesus instructed us to eat. Jesus, I'll tell you how he instructed. Jesus said. As far as I, I am aware, right. in the Bible, Jesus only okay. gave two commandments. Jesus, you do understand that our authority did is Jesus, the Bible. Did Jesus command you to follow him? Did he command us to follow him? Follow him. He commanded us to love him and thereby, by, therefore, by implication, to follow him. Yes. Good. We agree. So, when, when Jesus said, follow me, follow me only in things I say or I do also? Do you follow him in his deeds only or his sayings only? Or both? It's an interesting one. Uh, both verbally Think about it. Inshallah, next time you will take Shahada with us. Inshallah. No, 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 no. He will, he will does he does take a zero? Then, does that mean he, he does something that you won't follow? You won't. Huh? You won't. Jesus even if Islam is true. No, but I, I believe. No, he said he won't take Shahada. Yeah. No, I'm asking, no, no, no. even if Islam is true. Yeah. Even if Islam is the way of Jesus. Even if Jesus said Islam is true. Because, look, I am. I'm a humble student. I'm a humble student have of... Heard the, have you ever heard the question, can God create an object so heavy he cannot move? I have. Right, you're asking a question that to me has exactly... And I, I believe the question is absurd. I'm not asking you an absurd you question. I'm, I'm not asking you an absurd question. Subjectively, a question of similar levels of absurdity. No, it's not. <laughs> so you think Islam is as difficult uh, for one to believe in as it would be uh, for God to lift a stone heavier than himself? That wasn't the question that you proposed. I, I said... It's very easy for people. Followers, hence why over a billion people do follow it. The question that yes. you put forward to me is would you believe in Islam if Jesus came to you and told you that Islam was true? I believe it goes against He doesn't the need to come back. Jesus doesn't he doesn't That's need to Jesus does not need to come back to tell us Islam is true. He has already done it, you can't see it. But I'm just answering the question that you, you can't see it. Uh, uh, because, because look, look, everything Jesus taught, I challenge you, pick up the, the New Testament. Everything Jesus taught. Muslims do and follow Okay And then again the second challenge Everything Jesus taught and did The Christians do the opposite Challenge 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 Jesus taught there's only one God Jesus taught in the Gospel of Mark Wait wait In the Gospel of Mark chapter 12 verse 29 Jesus said there is only one God 
worship thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind. And, and the questioner was a Jewish man who had no concept of the Trinity. The amazing thing about this is the questioner was a Jewish man. If it was a Christian, Trinitarian, he said, Lord, Lord, I believe in the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And then Jesus would have said, yes, you are close to the kingdom of God. Here, the questioner is a Jewish man who only believed in one person, the Father. He worshipped one person, the Father. And Jesus confirms his belief. Here, instead of confirming his belief, Jesus should have said, hold on a second. You know what? There's a new covenant now. Now we add two more people into the Godhead. Okay, yeah. Yeah. these were hidden. Bef these two persons were hidden from the Jews throughout all those. I mean, 1,000 years. Okay, more than that, 2,000 years. Okay, okay. These three persons, these two, two other persons were hidden. Now they have revealed themselves to you. Now it is God the Father who doesn't change, but now I'm the Son who is also God. Okay. And the Spirit is also God. Now worship us three as one Godhead. But he didn't do that. To a Jewish man, he actually doomed he, 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 he doomed him. How? Confirming. He stated the fact that there is one God. No, Father, the Jews worship one person. The Jews are not Trinitarians. So, so if Jewish if man's belief that he yeah. took away from Jesus' words at that point and now represents the that continue worshiping the Father in existence. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jesus is telling this Jewish man to go away and continue worshiping, worshiping the Father. How? In the Gospel of John, in the in the Gospel of John, in the dialogue, the dialogue. In the in the gospel, yeah, in the in the Gospel of John, chapter eight, verse fifty-four. Okay, when Jesus is having a dialogue. So why did they believe in Jesus then? He was from false prophet. Sorry. So can, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, this is what I'm trying to explain. This is what I'm trying to explain to them. Yeah, the, this is what I'm trying to explain to them. No, there, there's a problem in the Bible, in the New Testament. When Jesus is telling the Jewish people, a crowd of Jews, that you worship the Father as your God. Yes? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm talking about a specific passage where Jesus said to the Jews, a crowd of Jews, chapter 8 of the Gospel of John, that you worship the Father of whom you say He is your God. Okay? Father is the God of the Jews. Jews are only worshipping one person. Is that clear? What do you mean you take? Bible. I need a Bible. I need. Do you have a Bible? Ask him. Do you have a Bible? I don't know. On this particular instance, I will have to go away and research it. I'll gladly talk to you. No, 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 no. Okay. Wait. Wait. Can you move there? Can you move there? Can you move there, inshallah? Come, 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 come. If I show you decisively, conclusively, in the mouth of Jesus, by his own admission that the Jews only worship the Father as one person. They didn't worship, they had, they had no concept of any other person to be worshipped. And it's in the mouth of Jesus himself is in, all, in his own words. And then in the Gospel of Mark, when, uh, when we, we wanted to make that statement. Okay, no problem. See, see you next. And then, and then, in the Gospel of Mark, a Jewish man asks him a question about divinity. Jesus, instead of changing the Jewish view on God, which to Christians is false, it's erroneous. Instead of changing that, he confirms it. He tells the Jew, you know what? You've just said, some, you've said something accurate. You are close to the kingdom of God. And then the Jewish man responds saying, Master, you have spoken the truth. There is no one else beside him. There is no one else beside him. Now, him to a Jew is the Father. Is not the Son and the Spirit included. To a Jew, him is the Father. Instead of Jesus correcting him, and Jesus is who? God himself according to your understanding. And he has come down to put the record straight. He wants to teach people what the truth is. Now, instead of saying to the Jew, no, hold on a second, you're that, that him actually means three. The Father, myself, and the Spirit. No, he doesn't do that. 
in, in, instead he sends the Jew away and the Jew is doomed and that Jew now will die a Jew believing in one person as God the Father and he's doomed by your standards he's doomed he's finished and who's responsible Jesus directly for not teaching him for not teaching him what the truth is now you respond to me you tell me how can Jesus do that to someone my knowing well that he is actually deceiving the man my honest answer yeah would be that I would have to go away read this verse read it in context okay read let's read it now Hebrew explanation and do my own research in my own time that's my honest answer and if you that. find your research to be inconclusive. To, inconclusive or to confirm what I am saying then what there is a problem there's a problem job done okay that's it that's at least it's sincere enough which I, I, I mean, yeah, yeah, to go, but these are some of the very tough questions Christians have failed to answer for centuries. One of them, another question Until is, next week. yes, 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 go and research. Why would, why would Jesus deliberately deceive a Jewish man when he had a perfect opportunity to teach him the new concept of God, the new covenant? Okay, the new revelation of God, which is in three persons, because obviously God did not manifest himself uh, to the Israelites in three persons. There is no evidence for that. No one claims that in his or her right mind, no one will, uh, will ever claim that the Jews had a conception of God uh, in three persons. As far as the Jews are concerned, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 44, verse 6, God is talking to the Israelites. I am the first. I am the last. There is no one else beside me, period. Full stop. Now, amazingly, the same book of Isaiah, which God is talking to the Jews, the Father. Chapter 63, verse 16, the book of Isaiah. It is the Father, with capital F, talking to the Israelites. Now, if the Israelites are thinking of the Father, and the same Father is telling the Israelites, I am the first, I am the last, there is no one else beside me. Now you come to the Jews and tell them, hold on a second, that Father, you know, the one who spoke to you, uh, actually didn't explain it properly if there are two more persons the Jews no 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 the Jews will say no hold on a second that God has spoken to us through all of our prophets thousands of them saying the same thing I am one I am one I am one I'm one person I'm your father I'm the father I'm the father I'm the father where did the two more come from is it true that they chased out Jesus for blessing sorry did they chase out the Jews chase out Jesus so him claiming to be God. No, this no, no. Actually, Jesus denied the accusation. In the Gospel of John, chapter eight, the whole story is there. They picked up stones to stone him. When he said, "Before Abraham was, I am," they picked up stones to stone him. And then he said, "Why do you stone me?" They said, "You, because you are making yourself God." He said, "No, yeah, yeah." I'll gladly debate with you. My, yeah. The original reason why I came over is to clarify a point that you were making in a previous debate. Yeah. The point about there being no early church fathers a conversation saying that God and Jesus are co-equal. Yes. And it's something that I just want to come to you and clarify. I, I, I stand by that you and, stand by and that. Yeah, I, I stand by that 100%. Before the year 300, 300 is our mark, 300 CE. Okay. Before that, show me a church father who explicitly stated that God the Father and God the Son even they call him God the Son, are co-equal. Yeah. I'm saying they were all subordinationists. Right, okay. you're saying all of them, all of, exception, yeah. subordination. Yeah, because if, uh, if there was any church father who would have said that they're co-equal, we would have known. This one? Sorry. We would have known. The question